Today we're going to be doing a 1UZ BBTI using a Link G4X Extreme ECU. It's a completely brand new harness built and the customer is using ITBs instead of the original inlet manifold. So let's get into it. Right, so as discussed, this is a uh, G4X Link Extreme ECU. It is going on a 1UZ VVTi. The customer is actually using ITBs instead of an inlet manifold, but obviously our engine has all of that for testing purposes. The harness is completely brand new. Uh, they're not using, obviously, the automatic gearbox with it. And so what the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and show you the whole build process of the harness, and then we'll jump in and we'll start going through the layout. So let's take a look at what goes into building one of these. I'll be back in a second. Right, so now you've seen the process of what goes through to build the whole entire harness. Let's start looking at what we're going to be doing today. First of all, we're going to go through the layout so the customer knows exactly where everything goes. We're going to try and explain it as best as we can because obviously he's using ITBs and not this particular setup. Now, with this harness, what we've done is, again, as per usual, it is a sub-harness or a modular harness system. So everything can be interchanged for whatever you like. What we've also done as well is because the Extreme is capable of handling drive-by-wire, we have actually put all the wiring in for drive-by-wire. The customer is not going to be using a drive-by-wire module to control the ITBs, but it is there in case he does want to do it. Okay, so there's a lot of flexibility with this harness, and you can do a lot of things with it. Uh, you can actually, if you wanted to, use a Storm as well. So that is perfectly acceptable with this harness. You can take the Extreme Morph and put a Storm on as well. And we'll get into that with our next link harness that we've done for a 1UZ non-VVTi, where we've done it exactly the same way, and it's actually designed for both a Storm and a Link, same engine harness. You can just unplug one and plug in the other one. That's a nice feature. With Link, all the pinouts are more or less the same between the two. Storm's just missing some of those components that are required for the, um, the drive-by-wire mainly all right okay so as i said first thing we're going to do we're going to go into the entire layout we'll explain all the different modular harnesses i'll go through some things because you can see some things plugged in on my harness here that are not going to be plugged in on the customer's harness and i'll show you what those are as we go through so starting over here at the ecu side nice and simple you've got your two plugs that go in there to the ecu you've got your tuning cable which obviously i've got plugged in so we can have our link software open over there after that, you're going to have a little branch point here with a couple of things breaking out here, there, and everywhere. So I'm going to go through those now. So first of all, you've got the section that pops out there and goes into the fuse box over there. Again, that's just all the powers and everything for the harness that are being controlled there. We then have another section, which you can see in the middle of these plugs, which pops out and goes to the fuse box over there. So again, that's mainly for the ECU side and a couple of other things as well. Um, going back to the fuse box, we've got our usual standardized 9-pin plug in there, so we'll go through that once we've gone through the layout, tell you what all the wires are, where they connect to, and how they connect. Obviously, you do get the entire uh, printout with the welcome pack of exactly where everything is and what it, where everything is connected to, so that's absolutely fine. Right, so moving on, we've got four little harnesses here that pop out for things that basically aren't used in this particular harness, but things you might want to add on later on. So to start off with here, we do have our digital plug. There's four pins in there. So there is four digital inputs that are available to you. And you'll see they are labeled down here in digital four pin. And it's basically digital input five, six, seven, and eight, which we aren't using on there. 
Do bear in mind if there's a storm on here, you may not have all of these available, um, just, just to be ahead of that. Right, next up is we've got our six pin analog expansion harness over here. So that's just a six pin DTM plug over there. Again, it is all labeled over here, analog six pin. It's basically analog voltage eight, nine, 10, and 11, but we've also given you a sensor ground and a five volt in there. So you can use those analog inputs if you do want to put any more sensors into the ECU. Obviously we've got, we catered for quite a lot of sensors within the harness, but there are still more available if you'd like to add them in. All right. Next up, we've added a pedal harness because as I said, we have wired this up even though the customer's not using it for a drive-by-wire system. Obviously, we have wired up a pedal harness in here so that the customer can use a pedal and a drive-by-wire motor with these ITBs if he does want. Or in the case of if he sells it onto somebody else and they wanna drop it on a 1UZ VVTi, it's not a problem, they can phone us up. We'll build them a throttle harness from the plug here over to either a one or a three UZ drive-by-wire throttle. And then obviously we can use the pedal inside the vehicle here. All right, then next up is our CAN plug. So obviously this, the CAN bus two is actually in the main plugs of the ECU. There is another plug down here that's another CAN bus over there, but we've wired this one into a CAN plug over here and I'm just using my Haltech dual wideband controller just to make sure that everything is working as, as we, so, Everything is working as it is supposed to. Okay, so those are your four little expansion plugs over there. And then what we do is we're gonna move along over here. You'll see we have a rubber grommet here for the customer to put into the vehicle. And what we've done is we've left a piece of SEL heat shrink over here. We haven't shrunk it down because obviously we want you guys to move this grommet along the harness to where it's gonna be most suitable for your application. Once you've got it in and you're happy with it, then obviously you can heat that up, shrink that down, and then that will be permanently kept in place. And most importantly, because it's SCL, it's got the epoxy lining in, so it will seal the harness so no water is getting inside the vehicle. Right, moving along there, we're then gonna get to our molded T-piece boot over here, and that's where the harness is gonna split going down that way and across the other side over there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start going this way over here, go down to the front there, and then we'll pop back and we'll start going that way over there. So. Out of this branch over here, you only really have one little breakout over here, and that is for your ignition harness. So again, we've put these on a sub harness. We know you guys like to change things over the over times. So in this case, he's gone for the Audi coils, but obviously it could be changed over to the standard Denso coils. For the 1UZ VVTi, it could be a 3UZ coils in there. You could put R35 coils. Basically, whatever coils you want, you just unplug this section over here, and you replace your coils, and we can make you another sub harness section that goes over there. Right, then the harness comes forward and it breaks out again to go to the cam sensor on the left bank. So remember, this is the left bank, that's the right bank, always looking from the back of the engine or from the driver's position. Right, so that goes into your cam sensor, which goes in the middle there. Coming further along down here, and then it's gonna break out of the front here to go to your oil control valve, okay, for the left bank. So that's gonna go in there. Again, everything is labeled for you guys, so there's hopefully no mistakes to be made there. Uh, also, at that breakout, it's gonna come down, it's gonna go to the front cam sensor. So remember, you've got three cam sensors on a one or a three UZ VVTi engine, two on each inlet cam, one at the front over here, okay? Right, then the harness is gonna go along there, and then again, as per usual, you've got your two holes there so you can mount it down there. Obviously, it's a little bit tight now because this would normally be pushed right the way up like that as the harness is held up into the firewall. Obviously draped over here, it does tug a little bit there. But anyway, so it's gonna mount there and there, and then over here it's gonna split off into two sections. So again, what we've done, first of all, is we go down to our oil plug, which goes over here. It's a six pin DTM plug, it's capable of holding an oil pressure, oil temperature, and just an oil pressure switch. Okay, so you can have all of the above. In this particular case, the customer's opted for a Bosch oil pressure and temperature sensor. So that's why we've got that little sub harness plugged in there. If you wanted to add in an oil pressure light, obviously we could just make another harness and add that in as well. But usually with this, it's absolutely fine. All right, then furthermore, we're going down here, through here, this little hole, you can see the wire over there. It's gonna pop out down here and there it's gonna plug straight into your crank sensor over there. Okay, so really, really nice and simple harness over here. Straight down there, the crank sensor, the oil plug, which will just pop out over there, and then wherever you end up putting your oil filter or sandwich plate, if you're gonna do that, again, no problem at all. And again, these can be custom made to whatever length you want. So if the customer has to have a change and have a remote mounted oil filter and he wants to move this, not a problem, he can phone us up, we can make him a slightly longer or shorter or whatever is required to fit his application. Okay, right, so now that we've done that, I'm gonna quickly scoot back over here. 
You'll notice I've missed the injectors up, but that's perfectly fine. They're on a separate sub harness that goes underneath there. Right, so at the TPT here now again, let's start going through with what comes out over here because we do have quite a few sections coming out here. I'm going to start off with the ground. So again, that just bolts into an M6 hole that is in your cylinder head there. All right, it's the only ground on the harness. Everything comes to here. And again, that just straight up bolted down. If you have a one user VVTR, you've probably got this bolt in there and not this one, all right? But yeah, so you need to use an M6 bolt on that one and just bolt that down to there. And that's gonna be your earth for your engine harness or the entire harness. Next up, we've got our fuel sub harness. So again, you'll see it's a four pin DTM plug. So this is actually capable of having fuel pressure and temp. Just be wary though, if you use a storm instead of an extreme, you don't have the functionality for fuel temp because temp four is not in the storm. So that's why I say we wire everything for the extreme, but if you do plug in a storm, some certain functions are no longer gonna work anymore. Okay, right, and then our, the customer has supplied his own fuel pressure sensor for that one, so we have hooked that up there so that he can then plumb that into his fuel pressure regulator against the firewall here, wherever he's gonna place that over there. All right. Next up, we've got our sub harness, and what I mean by that is the harness that goes down to the starter and the knock, all right? There will be a photo at the end where I've actually taken a photograph of the whole sub, sub harness plugged in underneath there. So if you wait till the end, you'll see exactly what that looks like. But as per usual, we've wired it with the capability of putting you know, proper Bosch wideband knock sensors on there. I think in this case, the customer, because it's a ITB NA, we're just sticking with the standard knock sensors, but if they wanted to go down the turbocharged route later on, again, he can phone us up, we can make him a harness and supply him the knock sensors and the studs and nuts and everything to drop straight in to upgrade to those. Next up, we've got our injector harness. Now, usually this injector harness does include the ACIS valve. In actual fact, there is all the wiring in here for the ACIS valve. Again, we don't want to limit this customer. If he wanted to sell this harness and someone onto somebody else, just a normal one or three UZ BBTI, they can happily phone us up and we can make the proper harness to control the ACIS as well. Obviously, in his case, it's ITBs. There is no ACIS system. So we've just created an injector sub harness and that goes underneath the intake and pops out here and plugs into all of the injectors for all the usual reasons number one you can pull the whole entire inlet manifold out without having to unplug all the injectors you just unplug this one plug at the back and um, again if you ever wants to change the injectors exactly the same process you can phone us up we can make him a new one with a with a used car style injector or an ev1 style injector plug no problem just unplug and then swap out okay Right, after that we have got our IAT plug. So again, because this is an ITB harness and he's not gonna have an intake coming in there and he just wants to really fit an IAT sort of somewhere in the middle here, we've given him plenty of room over there to place this wherever he wants to. And again, it is on a sub harness plug. So if he changes his mind or whatever, he needs to change the sensor around, he doesn't have to worry too much about that. He can just unplug that. We can make him a new harness, new sensor over there. All right. Then we've got our throttle plug. Now in this case, you can actually see what I have effectively done is I've wired up our 3UZ throttle in here because I have to be able to do that to start the engine. But in his case, he's using BMW ITBs. So obviously we've just made him a sub harness which is gonna go into his BMW drive by wire, T or not drive by wire, his TPS for his ITB. So that is over there. And that's what he's gonna be using and plugging into his throttle plug going underneath and plugging into his TPS. Okay. Then the harness is just gonna make its way along over there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over the other side now and let's carry on over there. Right, so as you can see, it runs straight along here. You've got a nice little mounting point here on the actual engine itself. This is actually on the cylinder head here, but no problem putting a P-clamp in there and mounting that. Then two, three sections break out of here. First of all, we've got our map sensor. So in this case, the customer, although he's ITBs and you'd normally use alpha N tuning, he does actually have the ability to run a vacuum tank to all eight individual throttles. And therefore we are supplying him with a map sensor for that. And because it is NA, obviously it's a 1.15 bar map sensor because he shouldn't be seeing positive pressure. If you went turbocharged, you could just replace the 1.15 with a two bar, three bar, whatever you wanted to do, no problems there at all. All right, next up is our ignition harness for the right hand side. Super nice and easy. Again, you can just unplug this, take out all your coils without having to even unplug all the different coils. So when you wanna do servicing, really, really nice and easy, as well as the other benefits, as I said on the other side, about wanting to change the ignition course for whatever you wanted. Right, again, runs along there, breaks out over here, and it goes to your cam sensor on your right bank. Okay, so that's for your inlet cam over there. 
Harness is then gonna carry on further along here and then it's gonna break out to go to the coolant temp sensor over there. Now in this case, just as we always do, we have included a single wire here for a temp sensor in case the customer does need to actually have that. In our case, I've just got it connected here because I'm gonna be using my IS200 MPX converter device to get the temperature of the display on the dash in a minute when we actually start the engine up. So we know that this cable, this wire is connected correctly on the other end. And obviously I'll go through those fuse box plugs, or oh, wires, as soon as we finish on the layouts over here. All right, so that is the temperature over there. Then moving along, we're gonna have our oil control valve for the right bank, and that's gonna plug straight in there. And the last thing we're gonna come down here, and that is for your alternator. So again, as per usual, everything is labeled for you guys nicely. But as per usual with most of our UZ VVTI jobs, we put this on a sub harness because there are a variations of alternators that you can use. And obviously sometimes people have space constraints and they cannot use this and they want a smaller one. This just allows you guys to obviously put whatever alternator you want on and you don't need to then start chopping and changing. You just unplug this. Phone us up, let us know what you've got. We'll make you a separate sub harness for that. So you can have the four pin later three UZ ones if you wanted to, apart from the crown. Remember that, that's a different ECU with a different regulator in, uh, sorry, different alternator with a different regulator in. But yeah, you can use the later uh, LS and GS uh, four pin ones if you want to. Again, phone us up, we'll make another one there. Okay, All right, so. That is the complete layout of the harness. Uh, as you can see, uh, what we've obviously moved to now is a much more modular setup. So that means that you guys can literally chop and change anything that you want. Um, we do obviously put all of the stuff in irrespective of what the customer goes for. So for instance, in some cases you'll see this fuel harness just has a blanking uh, a DTM plug in just to close it off because the customer hasn't opted for that. So yeah, so all these harnesses are built to a set standard, the main harness section. You guys chop and choose exactly what you want on the harness itself. And as you upgrade over time, it's super simple. You phone us up, let us know what you want, we'll make it for you. And we do obviously include all those extra plugs in there. So if there's anything that we haven't thought of that you guys wanna add in later on, not a problem. All the plugs are there, ready to rock and roll. So you do not have to mess with the original base harness. Okay, right, so. Hopefully that's nice and simple and straightforward and you're gonna be able to put the harness on with relative ease, get everything plugged in and so on. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move over to the wires in the fuse box plug and we're gonna start going through exactly what they are, how they're connected and what they should be connected to, okay? So, with our, all of our harnesses, you do get a full welcome pack. This details where every single pin in the ECU has gone to. This details where all of the plugs are going to. So there's your nine pin plug, and there's your four other plugs that are added on, and the little ones over there. So let's start from the top. So pin number one, it's gonna be this thick 14 gauge red wire. That is your permanent 12 volt supply. Okay, now in the case of a link ECU or most aftermarket ECUs, you can get away with doing it like this, but if you do follow Link's wiring, they do ask for certain things to have a kind of a permanent 12 volt supply. And I'm sticking to that rule and saying that this needs to be a permanent 12 volt supply. Now, unlike the standard ECUs, you're not gonna run into issues of the mem issue losing memory or whatever, because these don't work like that. This ECU only gets an ignition 12 volt supply to turn itself on and off again. All right, so red 14 gauge, Permanent 12 volt supply, that's how we're gonna stick with it. Then we've got black with a yellow tracer. You can see that one over there, okay? That is your start signal. Now then, with all of our link ECUs that we're doing at the moment, these are all controlling the starter relay. So, that black wire with the yellow tracer, that's gonna get a 12 volt signal and that then is gonna go straight to the ECU and the ECU is gonna take over and it's gonna control the starting relay. So what we do is we program them to crank either for five seconds or until RPM reaches above a certain threshold and then it will turn off the starter relay. So if you guys have a key in your car, you're gonna just basically turn the key like boom and then the ECU will take over and start the car up. Or if you want to put a start button, it's super easy because you just press the start button once and then the ECU will take over from there. Okay, next up is gonna be your yellow with a green wire and that's this one over here. You can see that is screwed into the um, MPX box over here. That's gonna obviously transmit to the dash over there in a minute when we actually get the engine running and a bit of heat in there, you'll see that heat, um, the temperature gauge going up. Next up is gonna be number four. That's a four to, uh, 16 gauge wire, sorry. That is your fuel pump and that's a gray wire. So that is actually supplying power for your fuel pump. 
In this case, the Link ECU is controlling the fuel pump. So you can just take that directly to the positive side of your fuel pump. Or if you wanted to go later and fit a turbocharger and you decided you want to use two fuel pumps or whatever, you can basically take this wire to the back of the car, fit your own two relays in the back there, and you can power the two pumps from those two relays as and when you wanted to. All right, so normal system, you could probably just take this straight to your pump and it'll be more than enough for that. Otherwise, if you want, you can relocate fuse the relays into the back and you can use this as a trigger for your relays over there. All right. Next up, we've got number five, which is yellow red, and that is your check engine light. So you'll see that over there, and we do have that hooked up to our cluster over there. Now, you'll notice the keynote amongst you that the check engine light is on, even though the ECU isn't on, and that's absolutely fine. That is something to bear in mind with Link ECUs. All of their outputs go to ground when you turn them off. Now, obviously, the dash has a permanent 12 volt supply. I've just got to connect it up to the battery, obviously, via some fuses over there so it doesn't blow up. But yeah, so because this is getting a permanent 12 volt supply, our check engine light system is actually grounding out. So that's why the light's on. So just to cover that before anybody starts getting any questions. Then, number six is going to be our yellow wire, which is this one over here, which is our TAC. So again, we're feeding that to the cluster so we can see the TAC signal when we start the engine up. Right, next up is going to be our number seven, which is our black with a red. And this is our ignition 12 volt. So this is the one that gets the system alive. And then I will say again, as I do with everybody, if you're using a key and you're using that black with a red wire, make sure that the wire you're connecting it to at the back of the key barrel is ignition and not accessory. Okay, so you can tell really quickly, if you find a wire at the back of your key that has 12 volts with ignition on, don't assume that that's ignition. Keep your multimeter on, turn the key to start, and if that 12 volt goes away, you've got an accessory. Go to the next wire that has 12 volts, turn the key to start, if 12 volts stays, that is your ignition 12 volts, okay? So basically what I mean is, if you connect that wire to an accessory feed, the moment you go to crank it, it's gonna turn off the ECU because you're gonna lose that 12 volt supply to it, okay? So just bear that in mind. Make 100% sure that you are actually using the ignition and not the accessory feed on that particular wire. Next up is going to be number eight, which is our pink and our blue wire over there. And that's going to a little LED. This is going to imitate an alternator light. Obviously, these analog boxes, unfortunately, they, they automatically det detect the alternator light. So when the voltage drops below a certain point, then they will turn on the alternator light on the dash. So I'm just using an LED over here to illustrate that the alternator light is working as we expect it to. Then lastly is number nine, and that's gonna be yellow with a black tracer. Now this is oil pressure. Now you'll see I haven't connected that to anything, and that is because the customer has actually not opted for an oil pressure switch. He's actually using an oil pressure sensor and built-in temp sensor as well. So in his particular case, that yellow with the black wire is going to be completely useless. It's not connected to anything. It is connected to here, but it doesn't go any further to a switch. Okay, so Damon, just remember that, that yellow with the black wire is not gonna be of any use to you. But again, it's all standardized. We put it all in, so we don't wanna limit you. If you ever wanna sell this on, you can sell it on to somebody and they can fit an oil pressure switch and it's all already done for them. They're all built in from standard. Okay, right, so I've gone through all of that. I've gone through the fuse box plugs there. So the next step for me is I'm gonna get this thing up and running. What I really wanna do is I just wanna get some temperature into it in reality, just so that I can get those temperature gauges and everything working so you can see them all. So I'm gonna nip off, I'm gonna get it started, get it warmed up, and then we'll come back, and then what we'll do is we'll go through all the rest of the testing that we are gonna carry on. So I'll see you guys in a second. Right, so we're back again now. I have actually warmed the engine up so we can see all the signals we wanna see as part of the testing. So what we're gonna be doing now is there's two parts of the testing. There's gonna be a very, very short one just showing you what happens when we put the ignition on, things that should become active, etc. Then we're gonna actually run into starting the engine. So you're gonna hear it run. That makes sure that everything else is working as it should do and the harness and ECU is obviously capable of running this engine. Now caveat for Damon, you are running ITBs, so that is a completely different system of tuning. So uh, what I've done is I'm gonna obviously set up all your inputs and outputs correctly, but you're gonna have to change that all over to Alpha N with your tuner, but shouldn't take them very long at all, and they can just go through with that quickly in the beginning. If you need help, we can get you help to get it started up um, when you're first on the engine. I do actually have a video showing you literally how easy that is. Um, I, I know there's a lot of people thinking that it, it's super confusing and it's, 
some sort of magic dark art or something, but it really is not. I've got a video up there and I'll show you how easy it is to get an engine started. As long as the inputs and outputs are correct, super easy, okay? So in terms of what we're gonna do with the ignition on, it's gonna be super basic. It's just gonna be making sure that the check engine light comes on in the fuse box and obviously properly lights up on the dash there. Uh, we're not gonna look at the oil pressure because obviously we don't have an oil pressure switch on this particular harness. And then we'll jump straight over to the alternator light, which will light up on these LEDs over here. Well, one of them will light up because it's connected to the alternator light. And that's really pretty much where we're gonna go to in that particular setup. Now. I do have a lot of videos on link and I'm going to have one on testing your actual outputs on an engine. Um, I noticed in my section I haven't done one of those yet, so this is a really good time to do that. So I'm going to show you how you can test like your injectors, your coils and all of that type of stuff. But other than that, I've got loads of link videos explaining how to get up and running, how to test everything, how to set everything up. So I'm not going to bore you guys and make a 55 minute long video on going and testing each and every injector. Uh, when it runs, you'll hear she's running nice and smoothly and we can clearly demonstrate that obviously she is running there. But what I will do is obviously I am gonna still pull the injectors out one by one, like I usually do just to show you that every cylinder is running as it should do, okay? But in terms of the running, what are we gonna be testing? We're gonna be testing the starter. So as I said, the ECU is controlling the starter, not the black with the yellow tracer wire. That is literally just going into the ECU to tell you, to tell the ECU that you wanna start the car. It then takes over. So you'll see that all I'm gonna basically do is touch the black with the yellow wire on the 12 volts, just boom, briefly, and you'll You'll hear that the engine will keep on cranking until it fires up. So, nice feature with the Link ECU means you obviously cannot uh, turn the starter motor on for too long, etc. etc. It takes care of everything there. Fuel pump again, the ECU is controlling the fuel pump. As soon as I turn the ignition on, you're actually going to hear it prime because that's how it's set up in the Link ECU. Obviously, you guys can change that how you want. But obviously when it is running and it continues to run, we know the fuel pump is working because we know the fuel pump is connected directly to the fuse box over there. So that's all great. Tack signal, I've just hooked up to the clocks over here so we can actually make sure that yellow wire is actually supplying a tack signal. So that's the only reason for that. Coolant temp, again, exactly the same thing. As soon as I turn the ignition on, you're gonna see the coolant temp go up. That's actually taking a reading from, from the single wire sensor, which is that one down over there just temporarily hooked up to there. Obviously we'll have the data on the actual um, link software from the engine coolant temp sensor that go into the ECU as well. So that's gonna be fine. And then lastly, again, I will go through and just pull out each injector one by one for you guys so you can hear it running, okay? And then other than that, like I said, I've got tons of videos. At the end of the video, there's going to be a link to the, um, excuse the pun, there's gonna be a link to the link engine management playlist video that I've done where I've done a crap load of videos on there so you guys can watch that and pick up a lot of things that um, are hopefully helpful to you guys and again we're open to suggestions if there's something you guys want to know please let me know and then I can actually do a video on it for you guys um, the next time we get a link on us through the workshop and I can do that for you right okay so jumping into it nice and simple we're just going to connect up the black with the red wire to 12 volts and as I do that, you're gonna hear all the relays click and probably the fuel pump go off. So I'll do that now. And you'll see the taco do a little sweep there. There you go. So you can actually hear the fuel pump relay click on and then click off again as the priming is done. Um, in this case, obviously we've hooked up the drive by wire. So you can clearly see when I, when I push the pedal down, we've got that on there. So like I said, we've just put that in the harness as a base um, so I can actually physically test it. Obviously I don't have ITVs in the workshop to bolt on you to test for you guys, but it does make sure that everything is working as it should do. Furthermore, you can see we are connected on the software. You can see that over there. Now do bearing in mind, I have put both lambdas on there because I am using the Haltech one. This is purely to make sure the can is working. So what I basically did, I plugged it all in, started the car. I can see the readings going up and down. And as I unplug the sensors, I can see they're shut down. Now they're going to jump around like crazy. And that's obvious because as you can see, the lambdas are about an inch and a half away from open air, okay? These aren't gonna read anything useful being in this particular position. And you'll see exactly what I mean over there. They're gonna jump around like mad because obviously every time it pulses, it's sucking fresh air back in again. So it just, it's just going mental when you look at it on the screen there. So don't worry about that. That's more just for my testing to make sure that the CAN bus system is working correctly as we expect it to. All right, but 
Check engine light, you can see it has come up bright now on the dash, obviously, so that's all okay. We've got it in the fuse box as well, so we put this in for you guys just so you can know that everything is turning on. Uh, you do obviously have the blue light on your ECU to tell you that everything is live there as well, okay? Second of all, we've got our alternator light on there, so you can see that is lit up over there. Obviously, once we start it, we want the check engine light and the alternator light to go off, okay, so that we know that they are working exactly as we expect them to. All right, so that's pretty much everything we're gonna test with the ignition on. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to put my ear defenders on, I'm gonna fire her up, and then we're gonna go and do all the tests there. So. Again, nice and simple, just the starter circuit. So again, I'm just gonna touch the black with the yellow wire on there. You're gonna see, I'm just gonna touch it momentarily. The engine will continue on cranking until it fires up. And these settings all can be changed inside the ECU in terms of how long you want it to crank for before it starts or what RPM you want it to hit before it starts. Okay, so these are all settings that are done there. Then obviously the fuel pump working is gonna be obviously the fact that it carries on running. So we know the fuel pump is working exactly as we expect it to. We'll come back and look at the tack on the dash over there, make sure the signal's coming through. You can actually already see the coolant temp being transmitted there. So we know that that yellow with the green wire there is doing exactly what we expect it to. And then I'm just gonna jump in and unplug these injectors one by one. And then you can see that as I do, each cylinder is misfiring. Okay, so air defenders on. ECU is turned on and I'm just gonna momentarily touch it. Radio. She fires up nicely there. Right, so starter fuel pump is all okay. You can see our tax signal is there and it is pretty accurate. I just set up a little dial gauge over here. there fantastic all right okay so damon as i said you're going to be running in sort of alpha n with a mixture of your map sensor that you're going to be using the vacuum tank for so there's going to be a lot of changes on your side when it gets to you uh, obviously as you know i cannot test with the itbs on because i do not have any physically in my shop to do so but we did want to make sure that everything is working as you expected to and obviously all the inputs and outputs will be correct on your ecu when it's all sent out to you so we can just have maybe a phone conversation or something along those lines and then we can get that all sorted out to get you started up because obviously we do want to get you started up so you can make sure you don't have any leaks that it gets up to temperature make sure that your cooling fans or whatever are working and it's maintaining temperature make sure you haven't got any major issues on there because the last thing you guys want to do is go to the dyno and then have a coolant hose blow off or whatever basically that is then going to ruin your dyno day and most importantly it's going to cost you lots of money so it is really important to make sure that these things are running, that you are happy with everything, that you haven't got any major issues, then book your dyno time so you're not wasting the dyno guy's time and your money as well. All right, so like I said, it's a nice short little testing one with this. There isn't that much to go through. We don't have, you know, OBD2 communication and blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. But like I said, 
I've got a whole playlist of link videos and included in that is going to be one of how to test your outputs and obviously I'll do one of how to test your inputs as well. So again, watch that one over there and then that's gonna show you guys who are maybe doing your own projects exactly what is required to test it out. And obviously that's the same process that we go through with every harness before we even start it. Um, I just don't wanna do you know, hour and a half long videos where we test every single thing for you guys. But yeah, that video is gonna help you do with that. But if you guys have any questions, again, please let us know. You can comment down below. You can reach us on our Facebook page of Phoenix Engine Management. We try to get back to everyone as quick as we can. Um, I will say in advance, I really apologize, guys. It's just me that can answer these technical questions. And um, I am working seven days a week, and we're trying to get back to everybody as quickly as we possibly can. So I do apologize if you don't get an answer straight away. Also, don't feel bothered about sending me another message if I don't get back to you in a day or two. Um, please... I'm not gonna be offended if you send a message again. It just helps to trigger in my memory something that I may have forgotten. So again, thanks for watching guys. Thanks for everyone's patience in terms of messages and so on and so forth. And like I said, if you wanna quote on something like this, please feel free to message us. Obviously we do have this all drawn up now, so it's relatively straightforward to quote you guys on something like this. And that same applies for anything else. If you guys see any other videos of harnesses that we've actually done, tested, done a video on, just remember those will be in our system ready to quote out. Um, if you guys want something completely custom, then obviously then you do have to bear with us. Uh, it does take time to fully design, draw up, and plan those entire things before we can quote you. All right. But thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain. The grind, I could change in my mind. Pick a lane, commit and climb. The only way to win it, life. I never miss that fact. Taking big swings, put your hand to the back. Put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag. Cause I sing what I mean and I bring it to the mad life. Ain't got time to kill, I got time to fail. I took a red pill. I know life's short, so I wanna live real, but how is it supposed to feel?